Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. In this video I'd like to talk about the mounted LMGs in Battlefield 5 for support class and how I think the game balances the mount actually really well for it being a Battlefield game. Now, for all I've known Battlefield, even though Battlefield has had large, large scale battles of 64 people, it's always been the, either the hiding in the very back with the sniper rifle or running around as fast as you can, those two types of gameplay have dominated the entire game. I, I've played a lot of Battlefield Bad Company. I've played Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1. Those are like the games that I've played a lot of multiplayer in, and it's always been the same. When it comes to Battlefield 5, though, there's an interesting balance going on. The classes are kind of all slowed down except for the medic with the smgs but and sometimes the assault with the assault rifles but a lot of the classes seem to have slowed down just a little bit and it's created the situation where they added a new type of i guess i guess it's a type i don't really know what you want to call it i call it the mounted element or the mounted machine gun so it's basically a gun that is, um, you know, normally in a game you could aim down the sights, right? Well, now there's a couple guns in the game for support where if you aim, instead of, you know, aiming down the sights, you just tighten the hip fire spread. And to aim down sights, you have to actually lay down behind cover and put the bipod up and aim, aim with it mounted, right? It's a mounted machine gun. And these guns are actually viable weapons. Like, me, my highest level class is support, and my highest level gun is the MG34, which is a mounted machine gun. Me as a player, I never play like that. I always play either super fast paced or with a sniper rifle. I mean, in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1, the first class I got to level 10 was would be the sniper class in both games. And it, I would never get another class leveled up. In Battlefield 1, it was out long enough, and I had it long enough to where I leveled up the other classes a bit more. But in Battlefield 4, the only class that I have uh, the max level is the uh, sniper class. I believe it's the scout. And that, no, that's not the scout's recon. But in Battlefield 1, you know, it was kind of teetered off a little bit. I kind of used all the classes. But now in this game, like, the mounted machine gun, where you have to mount it, is viable because, well, I think that they did something really right with it, and it's those guns do the highest damage and have the highest fire rate. Uh, well, most of them have the highest fire rate. There's some guns that have the same fire rate as some mounted machine guns, but for the most part, they have the same fire rate. And it's interesting with this fortification system because what you're doing in the game is when you're building things like the sandbags or the piles of dirt or the trenches you're kind of building these tighter spaces uh, to where, you know, you can change the angle of where you're mounted. So let me explain. There's um, this map called Twisted Steel in the game. It's got a swamp in it. And in the swamp, there's places where you can build um, where the sandbags are maybe only, I would say, four humans wide. And then it goes to another corner that's like four, three or four humans wide. And what you can do is just sit at the corner and then you have two angles to mount your gun or sprint over to another wall and mount your gun. Or there's like a wall behind you and you can mount your gun. So there's a lot of spaces in this game to where you can mount your gun. And they, they also really, part of the reason why I think this works good is they nailed the bipod physics where you don't have to push a button to deploy your bipod. You just go behind cover or lean over cover and if it can be mounted, the game does it for you. Um, it's still a little wonky when it comes to keeping the gun mounted i think that's just because they need extensive play testing to figure some stuff out but for the most part just the fortification system really makes this gun useful and you know to add to that point i usually die with the mounted machine gun if i stay in a position too long or i'm in the middle of the open like there's a lot of you know the changing of going to open spaces to close spaces, even on the like tight quarters maps, there's still places where it's open spaces or closed spaces or places where you can mount, places where you have to lay down and mount. And I can't push forward with this gun. I need my teammates to help me. But 
if I'm playing with like one of my friends, Rag, I can mount it, shoot. He can push forward. I can go to his position, mount it, shoot. You know, rinse and repeat that. Or if I'm playing, you know, with uh, uh, like a squad of kind of pro battlefield player, veteran battlefield players that know how the squad mechanics work, I'm okay to use the support and hang back while my teammates push forward, and I'm just supporting them and shooting. And this is added to the fact that in specializations, um, I added ammo capacity to my gun, and I have the machine gunner trait so I can spot enemies that are suppressed. So it all adds up to create a viable play style that has clear weaknesses and clear advantages that balances out with the rest of the game. So I would love to know what you guys think. Oh, wow. Look at this. The cord here but that's fine i'd love to know what you guys think about the mount of machine guns in the comments below thank you so much for watching i'm pacific the casual gamer i suck just as bad as you do at video games and i'll see you in the next episode stream vlog or steam it post of whatever i decide to make